Charles Barkley, uh, kind enough to join us. Charles, good morning. What did you make of uh, last night's performance? I thought it was awesome uh, that the championship going to Toronto uh, is great. I think it's great for the NBA. And, man, what a run of a Kawhi, Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard. It's one of the greatest runs we've ever had. Uh, going back to Orlando, Philly, Milwaukee. It's right up there with Dirk Nowitzki. I'm trying to think. Um, obviously, Michael had some runs. Uh, but it's one of the great runs of all time. Um I mean, it's hard to put into words what you saw the last two months. I mean, like I say, Dirk carried a team. Um, Michael obviously did it a few times. You know, all those other great players had a lot more help. Well, even Michael had Scotty, and you know. Yeah, but he ain't the same. It's Scotty was a good player. Don't get me wrong, but this guy, there's not another Hall of Famer on that team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Bird, Mikael. I mean, Bird and Magic. Those guys had three or four Hall of Famers. But uh, I don't mean any disrespect to any player, but what he carried was a lot different. I mean, it's one of the great runs I've ever seen. Like I say, Dirk Nowitzki is probably, I mean, I think uh, it's one of the great runs I've ever seen. And he went through a great Heat team to get that championship. Uh, he did. He did. Went through a great uh, Heat team. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's a small list. Dirk, Kawhi, you know, uh, so, uh, ooh, man, it was awesome. Do we put an asterisk by this uh, the way we did, like the Rockets when they won their titles? Everybody says, yeah, but Mike was playing baseball then. Uh, when the Bulls beat the Lakers and Magic was injured, uh, do we do? Are we going to do that? Is history going to look back and go, yeah, but Golden State was all banged up? And uh, not that if I'm a Raptor fan, I don't care. You can put whatever you want next to it. We still want a championship, but. Is is history kind to the Raptors with pulling off this surprise? Well, only idiots and fools think like that. <laughs> I, you know, uh, Ken, Ken, I think Kenny's happy with his two rings. Uh, I think Michael's happy with one his ring when Magic pulled his hamstring. I think Byron Scott did also. Uh, listen, if you're not, you just are being pessimistic if you can't give Kawhi Leonard uh, what you just saw the last two months. You know, he's back in the debate who's the best player in the NBA. I mean, he was in that conversation before he got hurt. And right now, it's, it's him, Giannis, LeBron, uh, you know, those guys, man. Uh, they, they're back in that – he's back in that conversation. He's the best player in the world, plain and simple. What would you do if you're uh, Kawhi Leonard? I stay in Canada. Uh, he's got the arguably the best general manager uh, in, in, in the NBA. Guy – know how to draft players. First time in NBA history since 1966. Not a, any player in the, on their team was went before 14. That's amazing that that guy can have all those good players. I mean, obviously he don't do it by himself. He's got to have a great scouting staff. But to be able to get to the championship with no player drafted higher than 14, uh, that guy, and first of all, listen, I know it's a lot of that we don't want to get his man credit, but what Yasai, Masai Ujiri did this year is one of the coolest poker moves in the history of sport. That man could have kept DeMar DeRozan, won 50 games and lost in the playoffs, and kept his job for another 10 years. Everybody would have been happy. But to trade his best player for a superstar, fire the coach of the year, <laughs> Put all his chips in the middle of the table. A nice addition, Marcus Gasol, too. Don't forget that. Because, you know, Dan, you know how these jackasses and idiots and fools work in our business. If Toronto gets beat, you know how the, the idiots in our business are. They're going to crush him. Uh, they're going to crush him. But he had the courage and conviction to put all his chips in the middle of the table and say, I'm betting on me. And he cannot get enough credit. And like I say, nice addition going out, getting Mark Gasol, who played fantastic. Uh, so sh shout out to Masaji Jerry, man. Uh, I know disrespect to R.C. Buford, who's fantastic. Sam Presti's fantastic. 
But what Masai Ujiri did in the last year is one of the great cool hand Luke movies of all moves of all times. Well, I also wonder, Charles, as we move forward, if I'm someone like Denver, let's say, or Portland or somebody, like take a risk and go after Anthony Davis, even if it's for a one-year rental. That's what Toronto did. If I think my team is there and, and a chance to elevate to be something special, why wouldn't I roll the dice and try to win a championship just like Toronto did? You see other teams maybe following suit and not just saying it's a foregone conclusion, Anthony Davis is going to the Lakers. Well, clearly... Uh, the the clutch group is trying to force the NBA to let him go to LA, which uh, I'm not happy with that. To be honest with you, we can't have agents dictating trades. You know, you can demand a trade, but you don't get to dictate where they go. I have a hard, serious problem with that. Like I said, agents have a right if they want to play or trade it, but you just can't keep stacking your roster to help your friends. I have a strong disagreement with that. The problem with uh, Anthony Davis is. Now, he's a clutch guy. They want him with the Lakers. How much do you give up? you got to understand something. They didn't give up a lot to get Kawhi. No. So that's a totally different animal. Do you give up your whole roster and after Davis leaves in a year? That's a totally different thing. Uh, uh, so I'm not sure how to answer your question okay. truthfully. Uh, but you can't just give your whole roster away if Alan Davis is going to leave in a year. Who do you think should be the favorite next year? Knowing what we know and knowing what we don't know is going to happen this offseason, who would you list as the favorite or if they're co-favorites next year? Oh, my God. That, 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 that's one of the craziest questions. I mean, well, you're the only person I talked to today. Um, that's the craziest question I've ever been asked. I got no idea. <laughs> I mean, nobody know what the hell is going to happen in the next month. So you're just really just guessing. Yeah. I mean, because you can say a team like Milwaukee. Everybody on Milwaukee's team is a free agent. Yeah. Uh, you know, you look at the Celtics, you know, I think Kyrie's already opted out. So you really don't know anything there with the Celtics. So anybody tell you right now who's going, who, should, who should be favored? I mean, uh, I was, you know, the team I picked to come out of the West, uh, Portland, mm -hmm. if they get Nurchick back, uh, and keep uh, Cantor and Hood, they might be the favorite in the West because they're the only team that's pretty much – I think Cantor's a free agent, but I think everybody else on that team is coming back. I mean, the Warriors are – the Warriors the team has got some serious questions to ask. Um, you know, what you do about, uh, you know, uh, KD obviously is number one, and what you do about Clay uh, is number two. Because I think you got to be realistic. You know, both of those guys deserve the max. They deserve the max. But I don't know if you're going to see them next year at all. Yeah, I was wondering about that with that injury with the torn ACL. They said six to nine months. But Tim Legler was on last hour, and he said, I don't know if you see Durant or Clay Thompson, which leads me to – should Clay Thompson have been out there? Do you have any problem where he injures the hamstring and then injures the knee on that same leg? Well, you know, Dan, like I say, obviously, you know, all these things are related. You ask any doctor or tell you if something hurting on your leg, your body automatically going to compensate automatically. Not that you think it, even if you're thinking about it, your body automatically going to compensate. Listen, Clay wanted to play. They kept him out one game. He came back and played uh, a couple um uh, a couple games. So, listen, uh, I, I, I think this is totally different than the KD situation where he hadn't played basketball in a month. Uh, and had one little fake scrimmage. I think that's a totally different animal. I, I've yeah. already said I think the, the, the Warriors were 100% wrong with putting KD out there. Uh, but Clay's a little different animal. Uh, now the most important reason why I'm having you on, you were at the uh, Stanley Cup final, and you had two blue shirts on. You had a golf shirt, and then you had a dress shirt over the golf shirt. Yeah. You know, what happened was, uh, you know, normally when you go to hockey games, it's cold as hell. So I didn't bring a T-shirt to wear under my light blue shirt. I only had a golf shirt with me. And unfortunately, when I got to the game, I have no idea why I was hot in the commissioner's box. <laughs> So I had to make a decision whether to take the, the golf shirt off 
So I just opened it up. <laughs> uh, I didn't worry about it because I was feeling pretty. I was feeling some type of way. You know, I started drinking like two hours before the game. <laughs> So I really wasn't worried about my physical attire, Dan. I was feeling good. <laughs> so uh, I, I heard, you know, I, it's so funny because I do no social media. And my friends like, dude, they're killing you on social media. I'm like, dude, you know I don't do any social media. They're like, they're killing you with your blue, light blue, and dark blue. Uh, but I, I thought it was hilarious. But like I say, you know, normally when you go to hockey games, it's always freezing. That's, that's uh, what we thought. I want to thank Commissioner Bettman again for the tickets at the last minute. He's always been a friend. I try to go to three or four hockey games a year um, in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And, uh, man, I couldn't – I've never – I've been to game sevens in early rounds, but one game to win the Stanley Cup, man, it was pretty cool. And the city of Boston was on fire that day. And congratulations to the St. Louis Blues, man. And shout-out to my boy Craig Maruby, who played for the Flyers. Um, I was happy for him. Uh, so it was it was awesome being there. Can you skate? What kind of hockey player would you have made? Come on, man. Black people don't skate. Stop it. A couple of them do. Name them. Name them. Name them. Uh, Right. B- Bufflin, P.K. Subban. Oh, oh, these Cadell's Canadians. Not, those, <laughs> those are black Indians, black Canadians. <laughs> you know, I saw P.K. up in Toronto, man. What a good dude. But, yeah, the Canadian doesn't count, Dan. Okay. Stop it. All right, all right. I'm curious about that. Uh, hey, uh, great to talk to you. Enjoy the off season. I don't think Fritzy will bother you for a little while. Uh, Fritzy. Hey, listen, let me tell you something. Okay. That I, I have to. I have no more interviews to do. Uh, I, I probably the next thing. I think people start calling me again doing free agency. Yeah. So it's gonna be nice, to, you know. Then anytime Fritzy wants me, I always take his call. Okay. Uh, you know, I got some friends at Espen. Uh, my man Josh at Espen, he calls. Uh, but listen, I'm going. To, I'm excited to get like three weeks off. Uh, um. Well, I think that's about three weeks before free agency. But, hey, this free agency thing just got really interesting, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Cause I... see, that, you know what, what it teaches those sorry teams? How about drafting well and making good trades? How, instead of just sucking up the place, saving all this money, and trying to you know, poach off other teams. This is a good this gonna be a good learning lesson. Why don't you just draft think about it. A perfect, perfect example. Masaya Jerry makes trades and draft his own players and make them better. He don't make his team suck and try to go after free agents. So this is going to be a great lesson for all them teams who've been sucking up the NBA for the last year and a half trying to get all this max salary cap space. I can't wait to start laughing in their face once free agents are hit when they're going to suck for the next few years. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, brother. Right, hey, have a great summer, guys. You too. Happy Father's Day. And that's uh, Charles Barkley joining us. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. Stream for free on BR Live or download the Dan Patrick Show app.